Hi there, my name is Cynthia Allen. I'm with Middle Tennessee State University. And we wanted to do a quick uh, video for the stormwater program, um, talking to you if you're interested in rain barrels and some quick tips that you can consider before you decide to install. This is not gonna be an in-depth video, just kind of a cursory um, for some information to consider. Um, and hopefully it'll help if you've been thinking of this at home. So a lot of people are starting to consider rain barrels and um, we just wanted to put together a quick list. Of course there are benefits because you're reusing this water and you're helping to conserve your water use at home. Um, but we did want to get together a list of some considerations um, and recommend that you research what's going to work for you. If there are local restrictions that prevent you from doing a rain barrel. Here in Murfreesboro, um, they actually encourage the use of rain barrels and sometimes they provide rain barrels to the community um, so if there are any of those and you're interested, let me know and I can uh, let you know if there are any that the city is offering currently. Um, but we also want to make sure that you protect your home for your foundation and uh, safety considerations that you might not have thought about and uh, sizing maintenance and purchase and DIY options. So. Uh, of course, we know the benefits of conserving water. First, there's the financial benefit, but also um, water is such a unique, precious resource that we all need. So we want to make sure that we conserve that every chance that we can. So inside of the home, there are appliances that you can have, um, also low flow shower heads and faucets uh, that can um, keep the water use down outdoors. Um, we're going to talk about the rain barrels, uh, but we also can have native plants or xeriscaping that um, reduce water use in the yard with the plant selection that you have. This is a picture of what that looks like. Um, and also there's a wonderful resource from a local um, professional, Margie Hunter. Um, and she's got some great tips on native plants um, if you're interested in that for landscaping. So for rain barrels, uh, there are many benefits. Um, first and foremost, we covered it does conserve money and water use, um, but it can also help um, reduce any overflow if your yard's connected to the storm drain in the street um, and you disconnect that downspout and use the water in other ways, then um, it can help protect um, for some of the runoff that can happen in our yards. Um, this water is not meant to be um, consumed for humans um, or pets because it's not a safe water source, but you can use it for landscape, um, irrigation, um, washing cars and washing things outside. So it's just a useful way to use water um, without having to uh, use your tap. So what is a rain barrel? It's a tool. It's one of many tools that we can use. Um, this is just um, collecting water that runs off of our roofs. On average, American families can use up to 320 gallons of water a day, and 30% of that is often used in our outdoor water use. So that's why rain barrels are a great, efficient way um, to use that water and reduce our water consumption. So when you're thinking about this, um, there are so many options. So we ask that you really consider what's gonna be beneficial to you, where you live, um, what size of the yard, how many buildings, do you have a shed? Um, how much space do you have to dedicate to it? Uh, do you have a garden? So a lot of things um, are gonna be unique to you. And so take time to answer some of those questions um, and um, budget considerations, or are you home often? Do you wanna maintain this long-term? Um, you know, do you, do you want this just to be used for pots or do you have a garden? Uh, so that's going to come into play with how large of a system that you might put together. But first and foremost, we always want to um, start with safety because it's um, containing large amounts of water. Um, we do want to make sure that uh, the lid is closed, that it has a lid so that animals can't fall in. Um, if you have a huge cistern or an open tank, you want to make sure that um, it's not large enough for kids to get in. Um, uh, some of those cisterns can be pretty big, but usually these rain barrels are already covered um, for mosquitoes, but we do like to mention that in case uh, birds or squirrels or different things can get in. Also, um, water storage can be pretty heavy, so make sure you have a foundation that's going to support that weight. 
Um, your average rain barrel is about 60 gallons and it can weigh up to 500 pounds. So you wanna make sure that that's not gonna tip over or that your foundation's not gonna um, fall um, or cause it to tip over on you or someone else. Um, so just considering the weight as well and make sure that that's solidly secured. Also, you wanna make sure that your home um, foundation is protected in the event that that may leak um, or crack um, and that you don't have water that would um, inadvertently get to your home uh, foundation from putting this together. Sizing, um, of course, is the, is the next most important issue. So on an average thousand square foot home, you can generate over 600 gallons of water for each downspout. Um, so most of your rain barrels that are 50 to 60 gallons, you're gonna definitely have some overflow. Uh, so you wanna make sure that when you're putting this together, you allow for that overflow or you size enough to capture. And again, that's just a one inch rain. So a lot of times you're gonna have more rainfall. Um, so you wanna make sure that you've sized this uh, to allow for that. Some people are looking at these larger containers or cisterns. Um, a lot of people are selling these locally. Um, just, we always say, make sure you know what's been stored in the container if you're buying it used. And then there are many options for connecting multiple rain barrels or tanks together uh, so that you can have the larger storage. Uh, but you'll wanna calculate the amount of your roof or your shed or your garage um, as you start to put together your sizing. Um, needs. And then also your maintenance. Um, again, these ones aren't closed container lids, so um, you would want to have a lid on these. But um, some unique things people are doing is putting goldfish in their rain barrels and they help to eat mosquito larvae. Um, I would still probably put a mesh because you'll stop some of the debris from falling in there. Um, it also secures it for safety. And um, if you use the proper mesh, it'll prevent the mosquitoes, but they have the mosquito dunks that you can use as well. Um, so that we definitely don't want a breeding ground for mosquitoes. And in addition to maintenance, a lot of people um, are looking at these from an aesthetic standpoint and painting them. Um, the other reason they might do that is some of these are white containers or they're uh, allow for sunlight to filter in and you can get some algae and growth. Uh, so a lot of times people will paint these and you want to make sure that you've got um, a paint um, or a material that's going to adhere. Um, make sure you've um, prepared that surface so that it will adhere. And then if you're worried about algae or you're trying to cover it, um, they've got these covers that you can buy or people use fencing. Um, or some of that bamboo like fencing that you can get to and you can kind of make your own covering that helps for aesthetics but also can help keep the light from penetrating. Um, on the maintenance too you want to make sure you inspect the fittings um, regularly make sure they don't have any leaks and um, watch for clogs and debris and then when we talk about the algae uh, some of the farm stores will sell um, these uh, stock tank defense, which is um, a beneficial bacteria that uh, farmers use a lot of times for their livestock um, watering tanks. And it's safe for livestock and birds um, and other wildlife. So you can put uh, a, you can put a chemical like that in there, or actually it's not a chemical, it's a bacteria, but you could use that um, to also keep that algae and growth down. But make sure you use it for the appropriate size. And um, clean your rain barrel regularly too, and you can use just a bleach solution in that. Um, so when you're getting your rain barrel, you wanna make sure you have some annual maintenance on it. That includes um, weatherizing and winterizing, and then again, for your overflow. So you can purchase these diverters, a lot of times they're around $20, $30, um, that will allow for the water to overflow and a lot of times people will put an overflow hose um, as well, or this is where they'll connect it to another. So just make sure you're um, ready to control the overflow and that you winterize these and prepare during the season change. So if you want to purchase, uh, there are many, many, many options. Um, from a cost standpoint, 
to just, um, you know, varieties where people put planters in the top so that they're aesthetic and have a multifunction. Um, there's so many different sizes and um, materials that they use. So uh, again, you can um, purchase or you can build your own. And we did a brochure several years ago that had these instructions and materials and it was averaging about 30 to $40 to put together um, a kit that had uh, for an overflow valve, um, an irrigation overflow was on the top, but uh, so you, it would have a spigot that you could use or irrigate from. And any of these materials could be found at a local hardware store um, for around like 30 to $40 at that time. Um, there are so many resources out there. The biggest thing is take the time to learn what's going to work for you. Uh, many of these have lessons learned from people that have had rain barrels. Um, some of these are foundation people that have seen some of the problems. Um, so they've got tips out there for homeowners so that they don't think they're doing something good and inadvertently have a problem. Um, creative ways, like I said, with using the goldfish and the rain barrel and uh, winterizing tips and things like that. Definite do's and don'ts that you want to spend time and see what's going to work the best for you. Um, some other helpful resources. You're probably a landscape or interested in gardening, so we included a couple of extra tips. And Metro is doing some rain gardens. If you're interested in rain gardens, there's some great resources. And uh, locally, we've got some resources in the city of Murfreesboro with parks and resources and uh, the stormwater program for rain garden tips too. But again, there are many, many, just a quick look is there's over 18 million results just doing a, a search on rain barrels. And that doesn't even count the education that comes from it on YouTube and some other things. So um, I, I just always recommend that people take the time to um, research it fully to make sure what's gonna work the best for them, um, what materials they might use, what size, of materials they might put together. Also some creative things that you can do that help support your rain barrel or your gardening. Um, this guy had a great little spigot out in the yard that he had run his hose to uh, for function and efficiency. And then out around your home, think of other ways and um, practices that might prevent um, any pollution runoff that might come from your yard and enter the storm drain. Um, if you've got a septic system, make sure that's maintained regularly to prevent um, any property damage and also pollution that runs off. Keep all your chemicals off of your solid surfaces because anything that hits a solid surface or pavement is gonna run off into the storm drain. And when it enters the storm drain, it immediately goes to the nearby creek and it's not cleaned. So all that pollution in, enters our waterways and our streams. And then we see a lot of grass in the streets. We try and recommend people put that um, back on the lawn so you get the nutrient value, but also that doesn't um, run off and cause excess nutrients in our streams. And that's my information if you wanna reach me. We've got the brochure in electronic or print version so that we can mail or email it to you. And uh, if there's anything that you found um, interested that you want some more information, you can reach me. And also, um, if you're interested in potential city options for uh, rain barrels, then be sure and let me know and I'll let you, um, I'll kind of keep you abreast of anything that changes if the city offers rain barrels. So thank you for spending time watching this and have a great day.